So why are Christians Christians? Why are we chosen? I hear the master say in John 15, 16, You did not choose me, but I chose you. So why are we elected? Why are we chosen? And I answer, not because of anything I have done. And my friends, it's easy. And then those of you are theologians, I'm addressing you now. Okay. It's very easy to give that theologically precise answer. It's by the grace of God. Gratuitous grace. Superfluous, superabounding grace. The Lord Himself has done this. And it's 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 tried. And I'm accepting it, it's fine. But let me give you another angle. Why did God choose me? I don't know. I don't. This is what must continue to keep me in that wonder and fear and gratitude. Lord, why me? Why did he choose to save me? And I look at my life even now. And I'm saying, Lord, how would you put up with me? You know, Paul speaks in Ephesians 3, uh, verse 14 to 17. And in Ephesians 1, 1 17. And he speaks about these unsearchable riches of the wisdom, all the depths and the lengths and breadth of the love of God. It means for us to see that we cannot wrap our heads around it theologically. Please, please listen. And this is for you that are reformed. <laughs> Those of us who are reformed. We might be so reformed intellectually as to lose the wonder of God's grace. Brothers and sisters, there is a level, there is a dimension, there is a depth, there is a breadth of these things that God does, which I will never explain theologically. I will never. I stand amazed. Stand amazed. And as you should see tomorrow, I believe in the preaching of my brother. How in the atonement God reconciles mercy and justice, where I've the theological mumbo jumbo to dance around them, but my friends, it is deep, it is, it is unsearchable.